Hi everyone and welcome to Build Your AutoCAD IQ. Uh, today we're going to be talking about or presenting tips and tricks in AutoCAD Part 1. My name is Ashley and joining me today are my colleagues Dave and Nauman, our AutoCAD expert elite. We'd like to thank everyone for taking some time out of their day to be here. We're certainly very happy to have you. Um, so before we get started here. Um, we're just going to take a couple of quick polls in the beginning just to, um, so if you can help us out and participate that would be great. Uh, so the first poll that we're going to do here is, is this your first Autodesk help webinar? Okay, so for a lot of you, it's not your first uh, Autodesk webinar, so welcome back. About 93% of you are uh, returning, and for about 7% of you, um, this is your first uh, Autodesk webinar, so a very special uh, welcome to everyone. The next um, poll that we'd like to run is, which AutoCAD-based application do you use? And it's a race between AutoCAD and AutoCAD LT. AutoCAD's coming out on front. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Looks like about twice as many people using AutoCAD as set LT. Great. So thank you, um, everyone, for participating in that. Um, so a little bit about us. My name is Ashley, and I'm a technical support specialist based out of our Boston office. Uh, Dave is also a technical support specialist, and he's based out of our Manchester office. And Nauman, our AutoCAD expert elite, is based out of Cincinnati, Ohio. Yeah, uh, Ashley, uh, hide the poll so we, so we can see your PowerPoint oh, again. Oh, sorry about that. Yep. Okay. Can you see my screen okay? Yep, now I can. Okay, Okay. great. Um, so before we get started, uh, please feel free to leave questions in the chat window. We have Nauman and also Victoria. I'm sorry, I forgot to mention her in the beginning. She's here also with us. Um, we'll answer questions as best we can. This session will be recorded and links are available in the registration reminder, the post-webinar survey, as well as the chat window. So some of our upcoming webinar topics include Back to Basics, an introduction to 2D modification tools, and that's on April 28th. Beyond the Basics, working with dynamic blocks, and that's on May 5th. The Third Dimension, turning on the lights, and that's on May 12th. And then on May 19th, we have again some more tips and tricks, and those will be to be determined. Um, you can watch past webinars um, at any time on our uh, Autodesk YouTube channel. You can also download the data sets from Box if you'd like to follow along. You can register for the Build Your AutoCAD IQ webinar series by visiting our landing page. And please visit and encourage your peers to visit our AutoCAD community forums and share your knowledge. If you're interested to share your feedback with the AutoCAD development team, we also encourage you to join the AutoCAD Customer Council where you can share your feedback and uh, help influence future releases. If you'd like to get involved, please email us at autocad.beta at autodesk.com. And our Autodesk Knowledge Network. So please visit here. We have so much knowledge um, for both AutoCAD and AutoCAD LT. We have help articles, um, hot fixes, and, and so much more. So please, please visit our, our Knowledge Network. So this week's agenda includes the um, user interface, which I'm going to go over, uh, 2D editing and 3D printing, which uh, Dave is going to help cover. So now we'll go ahead and we'll take a look at this in, uh, in AutoCAD. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is the um, new and improved help system. So if you've ever had a command that you, you want to use but you just can't remember where it is, I've certainly had that happen to me. Um, so I'll use just a simple example here. If I go to the, um, the help page and I type in erase, 
and I click here on the erase command, there's a, there's a new find button here. So if we go ahead and select that, it's going to point us um, with a nice uh, help arrow here that's going to show us exactly where it is so you don't have to spend your time going back and forth to, um, to find that. Also, um, our help is now tied into our Autodesk Knowledge Network. So the help system not only provides standard help, but also articles written by support specialists like myself, Dave, Victoria, and, and uh, the other uh, members on the AutoCAD team. So instead of having to search first in help, then going back and forth to the internet, you can search um, within help and find many uh, articles. And I'll show you here an example of that. So if we type in repair, it's going to give us, um, you know, one of 15. We have 26 uh, results here for repair. So we have um, help articles as well as on the left-hand side here, um, you have uh, articles from forums, technical support, um, product features, drawing tools. So there's, there's a ton of information now added into the help page. So it's, it's a bit more user-friendly than, um, than it used to be. So next we're going to talk about um, tool tips. If you're, if you're new to AutoCAD, tool tips are short descriptions of what a particular command does. Many tool tips have multiple layers of information. So if you continue to hover your mouse over a tool, often a second or even third layer of information will, um, will display. So if we use the copy command here, we click on that, it's going to first show us this first layer and then it's going to show us the second layer. And it's going to be the same thing if we also hover over the mirror command. It's going to give us that first layer of information and then the second layer. And a really cool one is if we hover over the array command, it's going to give us that first layer and then it's going to give us this cool animated um, GIF there. Now for those of you who are newer to AutoCAD, you might want to um, you have the ability to, um, to set the number of seconds before those, that second or third layer of information displays. So if you're newer, you might want to set the number of seconds to zero. So as soon as you hover over that command, that information is going to immediately display. But if you're a more experienced user, you might want to uh, set that number of seconds to two or three so that you have that time lag. And when you, um, when you go ahead and, and hover over this, it's not um, all going to display at once. So we can do that by going into um, options and if we click on the display tab right here we can uh, set the number of seconds. So if I'm a, I'm a newer user um, I can set that to zero and then if I go and I hover again over copy it's going to immediately display both layers um, of information for you. If you've ever wanted to see um, a graphical representation of a block or, um, or style before using it, AutoCAD 2016 introduced galleries to do exactly this for several commands such as the, um, the insert command or text styles or um, dimension styles. And what they do is they provide a, a graphical representation of the blocks or styles in the drawing so that you don't have to rely only on the name um, of the of the blocker style. So what we can do here is if we click on the insert tab and we go to insert, it's going to show us all the blocks here that are um, that are in this drawing file. And there's quite quite a few of them. So something else that we can do which is pretty handy is if you um, select on these three uh, dots down here, you can actually expand this so that you can see um, you can see more um, blocks at once you have that available. Now if you don't want to have the graphical gallery display what you can do is set the gallery view to zero which is off and then you'll get the older um, insert dialog box so if we do that here and we go ahead and set that to zero when we click again on insert, it's going to pop up that, that insert dialog box that if you've been using AutoCAD for, for quite a long time, you're, you're probably more used to that. So before I go ahead and close that, one other thing that I wanted to show you is um, in, um, you can use uh, autocomplete for block names. So for example, if I start typing HS in here, 
um, you'll see that a block name in the dialog will automatically jump to a block starting with HS. And this basically helps you find the block that you want without having to type in the, um, the entire name. Now, it's not the greatest um, image there. So also what I can do is I can expand this um, dialog box to make sure that this logo is exactly what I want. Um, some other dialogues that have been updated are also the Layer States Manager, um, the Page Setup Manager, and the Enhanced uh, Attribute Editor. So next thing I'm going to talk about is the Quick Access Toolbar. The Quick Access Toolbar displays frequently used commands and is always visible in the user interface. In addition to these commands, you can add your own commands to this toolbar very easily. So some of the commands that we already have here, if we select this, um, this drop-down arrow, we can see that we have new, open, save, save as. Uh, we have all those commands there. Now let's say, for example, that I want to add the layer states to my quick access toolbar. What I can do is if I right-click on layer states, I can select Add to Quick Access Toolbar, and that'll automatically um, put that right up here in the Quick Access Toolbar. And the great thing about that is no matter where I am, I'm always going to have it in that position. So I don't have to worry about going to find it again. Now, if I don't want it there, I want to remove it, I can do the same thing. I can right-click again, and I can select Remove from uh, Quick Access Toolbar. And now it'll be back in the position that it was before. Also, um, depending on your preference, one thing you can do is you can either have the quick access toolbar displayed um, above the ribbon, which it is now, or if we, um, we can show it below the ribbon. And that's, again, all based on your, um, what you prefer. Another thing that we're going to talk about is autocomplete. So autocomplete is going to help you find commands even if you don't know what the exact name of the, um, of the command is. So for example, if I type in here the command plane, it's going to bring up all the commands and system variables that contain the word um, plane. Now it, plane doesn't have to be at the beginning of the word. It can also be at the end of the word. But AutoCAD is still going to give me that um, that list. And if I wanted to do something a bit more um, with some more options, I can type in view, and you see that has many more um, command variables. And it's going to um, give me everything there that contains uh, the word view. So the great thing about that is you no longer have to remember exactly how the name of a command begins. You only have to know um, part of the name anywhere in it. And I'm sure, that, I'm sure that everyone has done this. I do it very often myself. But if you've ever typed a command wrong and you've received that unknown command error, with the latest versions of AutoCAD, if you mistype a command, AutoCAD will attempt to autocorrect it to the most relevant command. So for example, if you're typing really fast or you're an, an awful speller like me and you happen to type, um, you want to type in purge, but you misspell it, like I just did now, so I typed in P-R-U-G-E, um, AutoCAD will automatically um, default to the purge command, as it did. So that's a huge advantage for people that um, may not be the best spellers. So another thing um, that we're going to talk about is right-click behavior. Within AutoCAD, um, we try to bring commands to you instead of you having to go out and, and search for them. And a really good example of this is the right-click menu. Um, if I, if I want to uh, right-click um, on an object, a right-click menu will display the standard AutoCAD editing commands, um, such, as, um, such as erase, move, copy, and depending on what you select, um, commands uh, specific to that particular object. And actually, while I'm in here, something that I wanted, another thing I wanted to show you, which is really neat, is um, the select similar command. So I selected this um, squiggle polyline here, and if I um, if I go ahead and I select uh, select similar, all other polylines on the tree line layer uh, with color by layer will also be selected, allowing me to. Um, to easily modify or make changes um, to all the objects without having to, uh, to manually select them. So you can see how that would come in uh, very handy here. 
Another thing that you can do is you can also change the behavior of the right-click button to repeat the last command instead of displaying the right-click menu. This is, um, this is important for those of you that have been using auto CAD for a long time and are, and are used to having the right-click button on your mouse to act like the Enter key. So what I can do is um, I'll go into Options, uh, User Preferences. I'll click on um, the right-click customization button. And here what I can do is in the default mode, in edit mode, I can select the options repeat last command for both of them. And what that's going to do is that's going to change the right click button to now act like the um, like the enter key. So if I have these two lines here and I want to move, so I want to just move this line over here. Now all I need to do is I click this um, this line over here. I'm going to right click, and um, since uh, the move command was the last command that I used. Um, AutoCAD will um, uh, uh, automatically type the command again. So this can save a lot of keystrokes using this method if you're using uh, the same commands uh, over and over again. Come in very handy. Um, so now I want to talk about um, pick first. So the pick first system variable controls whether you can select objects before you issue a command. So for example here, if I select this line, and I hit the delete key, the line is going to be erased. If I turn pick first off, if for, or if for some reason when I was opening a drawing it was already off, and I select the delete key, a message box will now display asking if I want to turn pick first back on. So let me go ahead and turn pick first off. Now if I select this line again and I hit the delete key, that dialog box is going to pop up asking if I want to turn pick first back on. And I'll say yes. So next thing I want to talk about are um, workspaces. So, so actually, just let me yes. interrupt for one second for the, uh, sure, for the pick first. So that, that pick first variable, um, it, it, this is really kind of a test, uh, I think, for um, some upcoming changes for or potential changes to the user interface. So right now, uh, that um, it, that pick first dialog box only works with the delete key, um, with pick first being off. So if, if you typed copy or you typed in the command erase or anything like that, it's it's not going to display that message. But I think that if people like this type of prompting, then maybe we'll see some more of that in the future. So. Um, just you know, keep that in mind when it comes to you know this type of a setting. Yeah. Thanks, Dave. That's actually uh, that's actually a really great point that I didn't mention. So thank you very much for mentioning that. Um, the next thing that I'll talk about are workspaces. So if we click this um, this gear icon in the corner, it's going to display um, your your workspaces. By default in AutoCAD, you're set to the drafting and annotation workspace. And you can see that here in the um, in the home tab, I, I don't have, for example, any 3D um, modeling tools. I have line, polyline, uh, arc, circle. Um, and these are the types of, of commands that are displayed in, in drafting and annotation. However, um, if I wanted to do work in 3D, and keep in mind also that um, this is only in AutoCAD since LT doesn't have these 3D tools, I can select the um, the workspace. And now notice um, the commands on my home tab, instead of having um, line, arc, and polyline, I now have box, extrude, so that um, the 3D commands um, are, are front and center in my ribbon. We also have additional tabs for solids, surfaces, um, and meshes. Depending on your on your workspace settings, um, any changes that you make to the workspace uh, will be saved for the next time you change to the workspace. And you can do that by selecting here your um, your workspace settings and automatically save workspace changes. And and the great benefit here is that once workspaces are created, you can quickly switch um, between them as you need. So. 
AutoCAD contains many um, really out of the box shortcuts, but there, um, but there are so many that it's it's sometimes hard to remember exactly what is what. Um, so I want to do a little uh, poll here. By show of hands, who knows what Control Shift V does? Okay, I can't see your hands. I'm just kidding. Um, but I do have a um, handy sheet here that. Um, that will show you um, exactly what they do. And uh, so, um, by the way, the um, the series of, of keystrokes will not only... Ashley, uh, can, yes. Ashley, can you go, uh, just uh, hit the present button so you can see that full screen instead of a smaller version? Yes, actually, you know what? Um, Yeah, I think I think a Zoom slideshow would take care of it. Yeah. Just a uh, pick from current slide on the upper rib on the ribbon. There we go. Oh, just jump past everything. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there we go. That should be that should be a little yeah. bit better. Um, so, Control Shift V. Um, with that, you can paste data as a uh, as a block. Um, the keyboard shortcuts are a really excellent way to increase your speed and productivity, and uh, really handy here. If you go to onlinelabels.com, you can actually print out these um, these stickers if you'd like, and and uh, use them on your uh, keyboard. So. And actually, um, you know, if you if you're interested, if you can back up a couple of slides, Ashley. Yeah. So, so there's actually a, a PDF file that we're going to be uploading along with the PowerPoint and the, da the data sets and such, and it includes quite a bit of information in here. Um, there's the the basic uh, key layout, which is just going to show you what you know what happens if you hit F8. You know, toggles ortho on or off. Um, it also has uh, you know these more advanced things like Control Shift V. So if you did a you know selected a bunch of objects, you did a copy, and then you do a Control Shift V instead of just a Control V, which is paste. It'll paste the objects in, but turn it into an anonymous block, which is kind of cool. Um, on the next page. It starts going through um, the the uh, keyboard shortcuts, and these are the default keyboard shortcuts that are inside of AutoCAD. Right? Um, I didn't uh, include all of them in the PowerPoint, but there's actually let's see, what is it? Uh, see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pages of them in the uh, PDF file, and then the the last page on this one was the, um, the this thing is basically laid out so that you could print this out on this online labels.com and the stickers will come in in the right size you could put them on the keyboard if you wanted to so it can be handy if you're um, if you like using the keyboard shortcuts and stuff you know, I, I know there's a handful that I always use but uh, if you know having something like this right at your fingertips might might be useful and of course you can you know customize it if you want to change L to be layout instead of line, you know, you can do that. So, uh, you know, feel free to download that PDF file instead of just the PowerPoint because the, the PowerPoint's not complete with all this data. Okay. All right, Dave, and I, I think um, I'll, I'll go ahead and turn it over to you. Okay. And, uh, Ashley finished in record time today. I think she's a little nervous. Um, so so we, we may have some extra time. Um, actually, before we turn it over to me, uh, Namin, are there any specific questions we want to ask about what Ashley showed? Uh, okay. Yes. Um, she, can you repeat the gallery view just a tad bit, uh, if you can touch back on that? Um, somebody was asking what, again, it does exactly. Yeah, so um, let me go here and back. Let 
let me set that to. So first of all, gallery view is, um, it affects several different types of commands. So uh, for the insert dialog box, text styles, dimension styles, and maybe something else, I'm not sure. Uh, it's not for everything. Um, but it's, uh, it's basically just a graphical representation of the objects, right? So if you go back to insert and pick the drop down, and um, one other thing with this, uh, if you have a, a very large drawing and uh, has lots of blocks in it, it might take a moment or two to um, display the gallery because it has to create previews of all the various blocks. So, so instead of um, instead of having to, to rely only on the name of the of the block, you actually have you know you're able to have a, a, a graphical representation. Which, as Dave said, if you have um, if you have a uh, you know a lot of them, it's it comes in very handy because I, I personally wouldn't be able to remember all of the you know all of the names. It would it for me. I'm a visual person, so it helps me to have um, the the graphical um, display. Yeah, so if you were doing furniture layout and you had uh, 10 different chairs called chair 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10, um, you may not know that chair 5 is the uh, you know executive chair. So if you have a, a nice picture of it, you don't have to remember that it's chair 5. And, uh, you can just select the image that, that you want and it will go ahead and start the insert command. Um, there is a, a little drawback is that uh, you don't have all of the options you get when you just use the insert command. Um, but you know you can still just type in. I, I think you can just type in uh, insert at the command line, even with gallery view turned on, right? So if you just hit escape, Ashley, and type in insert. And I'm, I'm having a lag on seeing what you're seeing, but did it bring up the insert dialog box? Yes. Yep, it brought okay. up the dialog box. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I, for some reason I'm getting a lag on, on seeing what you're showing, but uh, hopefully everybody else isn't. So uh, hopefully that, that helps. And same, same kind of thing with text styles and dimension styles. So you'll get a graph, graphical representation of those objects. Anything else, Naman? Um, no, I, I think uh, uh, most uh, everything you have covered um, in, in the presentation, I think, uh, was pretty well for her first time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the uh, other, uh, there is one question, though, I do uh, also want to touch on is, is uh, basically um, in the ribbon, some people are confused with the terminology. Uh, also, like, you know, you have the tabs, the panels. Uh, so I posted a link uh, in the chat, uh, basically, to kind of take you through graphically what all the terminologies are for the ribbon itself. <laughs> it might be something I'd like to see, too, because yeah, sometimes I may be using the wrong terms. Uh, but, all right, so let me uh, go ahead and I'll take over as presenter here. Uh, to me. Isn't it? Let me do this. Oh, Ashley, can you try to change the presenter to me? Because I'm for some reason it's not. Uh, sure. Let me grab it. Um, looks like it. It did change the um, the presenter to you. Okay. Um, but let me try again here. Oh, nope, I, I finally switched to me. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so main screen monitor one. Okay. So let me know if you can see my screen, okay? I'll let you know when. I think, Dave, your, your computer might be uh, lagging behind because I was uh, seeing Ashley uh, fine. Your screen just popped now up. I see yours. Okay. Yeah. Well, let me know if it's if it gets bad. Maybe uh, if I have to, I'll jump over to the other room. Uh, uh, 
um, plugged into the internet it should be fast, but uh, we'll see. Okay, so um, first of all, thank you, Ashley, for the going through the pieces that you did. Um, I just think you did a great job. Um, have to give you less coffee, think next time. But other than that, we <laughs> did great. <laughs> um, so the uh, so I want to show a few more things here. Um, some of these things I'm going to be showing are actually repeats from what I did on the uh, What's New with AutoCAD 2017, but I know a lot of people probably haven't been there for that, so, so um, it'd be great to give you a little overview. Uh, so I'll show you a couple of things here um, with some text and then uh, some selection objects and some dimensioning, and then we'll get into some other options. So uh, the first thing I want to show is a, a new option here with uh, text inside of 2017. If I do a text edit on a piece of geometry, uh, you're going to see that after I type in something, so see, I don't know if you can see too well here, um, and is my screen updating, by the way? Yep, I see it yeah, on I my it's side. Fine. Okay, all right. So uh, if I pick on a piece of text, you can see all of these map Fs here are lowercase, and I want to change them all to uppercase. So I'm going to go ahead and change this first one and hit enter. And you'll see that uh, there's a new option at the command line, and I can um, work in either single edit mode or multiple edit mode. So basically what I can do is I don't have to keep uh, jumping back and forth ending a command and getting into another one, I can just make all the edits all at once instead of uh, starting the command over and over and over again. Basically, it's going to help you with a, you know, reduced keystrokes. It's not, not going to be as many. So it's a pretty simple little thing, but it's a, you know, a powerful tool. Um, I also want to show another uh, great feature. Uh, a lot of people probably don't know about some of these things like the text align command. Uh, I've got a note here, and maybe what I did is, you know, I had a bunch of notes off on the side or a master note list, and you're just kind of dragging and dropping notes over from, from your master list to get, uh, you know, something that you're going to use as the notes for this particular drawing file. But you can see when I did this, I was kind of sloppy. I wasn't really caring too much about, you know, where the location of something is. And there's a command called text align. And I think it's under the annotate command, this little drop down here. I tend to like to type. So I'm going to just type in text align. And you can see using Ashley's little um, trick about keyboard or autocomplete, I don't have to know what the command is. I can just type in text and then hit text align. So that's kind of cool. Uh, and I'm going to say I want to align all of these pieces of text. And I'm going to go into options because, you know, we can change how we want to do this. Um, so we can... Actually, yeah, so I'm set that to, to be there. So it can um, you know, set the spacing. I could set it vertical or horizontal. Uh, I'm just going to say I want to align things vertically, which is the default. And so current vertical. And then I'm going to pick the text I want to align to. And oops, I can do this right. Hold on. I'll try this one more time. So text align. Grab the stuff I want to align to. I'm going to pick the text. And you can see that as I move my cursor around, it's kind of cool. You can have the text dance back and forth. But what I really want to do is just uh, drag a point straight down. And that moves the insertion point of all of those pieces of text to line up with that first piece. So, uh, you know, in the past, what you might have had to do is do a line from the insertion point of here, drawing, drawing it down, and then move everything from the insertion point to perpendicular to the line. This gets rid of all those steps, right? I can just sit there and use one command, and it's going to automatically um, move everything to where you want it to be. So that's a, a really nice tool for doing basic, you know, text cleanup. Um, I I also want to show uh, kind of a, a different thing here, and this is like the the best tip might be how to turn this off for some people, but uh, I'm sure that most people know that if if I'm doing a selection set and I pick a point and I go to the right, we get what, what we call a window crossing. If I go to the left, I get a, a, a crossing window. So it's a window or yeah, just a window selection or a crossing selection. So window selection means that uh, it, everything, everything would have to be completely within the selection set or within my, my uh, selection area in order to be selected. A crossing is anything that's in it or I'm touching will get selected. But there's a, a different 
option that started out in 2016, and it's called the lasso selection. So if I pick my left mouse button and I hold it down, and then what I can do is I can start building a selection set of you know really weird sizes and stuff uh, instead of having uh, just a rectangular box. So I'll show you an example of this, uh, and we'll see if I can actually select this correctly. So I'm going to pick, uh, so say I want to get rid of these triangular windows and the elevation of my, my building. So I'm going to use my lasso selection, and I'm just going to come up here and uh, kind of select things here. And you can see that it just selected you know, all of those components that fell within my lasso, and I can just hit delete and delete those objects and replace it or you know, do whatever I need to do with the elevation. So that's, that can really save you a lot of time. I know and I, I've had um, drawings where it's like, okay, erase this, erase that, erase that, because all you have is a rectangular selection option. The lasso will, uh, will allow you to build something you know, that's a little bit more flexible. And maybe, like I said, for some of you, the best tip will be how to turn that off. So if I go into options, and, and by the way, um, there's all kinds of different ways to get into options. We can right-click in the command line and select options. You could type in open. for optional thing. Um, and as long as I'm here in this elevation, I want to show you, I think, one of the, the most powerful new features that was introduced last year in 2016, which is this new dimension command. And uh, still have access to all of the, the basic um, tools, right? I can do a, a linear, aligned, angular dimension, arc length, whatever. Um, but this one command here will attempt to do all those other dimension types all at the same time. So I'll show you a couple of examples, right? Um, I'm just going to pick on dimension, and then I'm going to select on the top of my roof line here, and you can see that it's adding a nice uh, you know, linear dimension. Do the same thing over here. Um, if I select on something with an angle, right, it's going to um, go ahead and uh, create that uh, aligned dimension. Um, if I came over and I selected on an arc or a circle, you can see that I'm getting a radius dimension. Um, if I select on, uh, let's see, oops, I didn't want to get out of that. Um, if I select on a line here and I hold down the control key and I pick another line, right, now I'm getting an angle dimension. So this one command really can take the place of all these other commands all at once. Uh, it'll you know, try to figure out what it is you want a dimension based on what you're selecting. And uh, you know, you're not jumping back and forth from one thing to another to another. So um, if you haven't tried this yet, please do. It's a, it's a great new tool. The, um, if you want to type it into the command line, it's just dim. So it's the dimension command. Uh, if you want to find out more about it, type in dim, hit F1. It'll bring you to the help. Sometimes, so dim, and you can get to the dimension command or all of this, all these other um, articles that deal with that. So, you know, I just want to emphasize that uh, you know, if you're like me, uh, using AutoCAD for a long, long time, and by the way, I started with version 2.6, so I've been using it for a few years. Um, you tend to find that uh, you know, you stopped using Help because you just could never find anything useful in Help. What I want to just emphasize here is that try out help again because it, it is now just a, a wealth of information. You don't have just you know the, the standard AutoCAD help about what the dim, dim command does, but you'll get all of these different articles that Ashley was talking about. And uh, it's, a, it's definitely it should be your go-to place for finding out information about a command. 
So um, I'll get off my soapbox, but th please, please take a look at that. Um, so the next thing I want to talk about here is uh, getting into some of the stuff that I showed in the What's New with 2017, but again, some great new productivity tips. And the, the first thing I want to show is actually this uh, centerline command. So I've got a, a really simple little mechanical model, and I want to add some center lines and some center marks and stuff to just to finish up my drawing. So uh, in the you know if if you had um, you know you can see that these two lines here are not even parallel, um, but I want to draw a center line between this part connecting to the to the cut through the middle and through the other elevation here. There's a new center line command. So this is on the annotate tab and it's called center line. I just go ahead and select the objects that I'm interested in and uh, adding a center line to and it'll go ahead and add in that center line. Uh, one thing that uh, you know I want to maybe I want to change right away. Actually I'll, I'll come back to this in a second. Uh, so I just added a center line. I'm just going to hit a return to get into the command again and I'll say I want to add a center line over here on the on the other side and then I'm going to add a center mark to the circle. So I just pick on the circle and it will create that and you'll see that these things are associated. So if I move that circle it moves the center line as well, right? So it's associated to the objects. Uh, one thing I want to show, I'm going to undo this real quick, is um, there's a bunch of different settings for center lines and center marks. So I'm just going to type in center and you can see that there's uh, you know cross size and center mark is command center axc is for extensions etc. So there's a whole bunch of different commands. I'm going to use the center extension option. And well, actually, before I do that, uh, let me just show this one more time. I'm just going to place my center line. And notice how I just have this little gap here showing past the the edge of the center line. I'm going to go and do my center exc. And I'm going to change that to maybe 1.5 units. And when I select my center line this time, right, I'm going to get a nice extension past the, the other components. So add that. And I do the same thing with my center mark. All right, so there's basically my, my center lines. But these things are also adjustable. So I can just grab on the arrow here, and I can just stretch this over and grab this one. Oops and stretch this over. So you can very quickly add center lines and center marks to your drawings and not have to manually you know, manage that. In fact, I, well, I, I was just telling Ashley, never try something you haven't tried before, but I'm going to try it anyway. Um, if I stretch the circle, you notice how the, the center lines automatically extend it as well so that uh, I didn't have to go back and re-annotate the uh, circle with a new center mark. It's one and a half times the units of whatever it was, so as I stretch it, it's going to automatically adjust as well. So pretty cool? I think so. Okay. Uh, so that's... Uh, hey Dave, before, this, yeah. before you get off of that center line, uh, I just posted some links on all the commands related to it. Uh, okay. But uh, just very quickly, uh, sorry, um, if you, uh, you mentioned about the help and revisiting the help itself. Um, that's how I use is the help of these days is like uh, it, there is a button at the bottom it says commands for uh, usually it is like related reference and that's been the most uh, helpful yeah. tool for me. So if you go to center mark. Yeah, to center mark. Oops, not center mark. Center mark is a store I think. Then I go to center mark command, yeah. There's uh, commands for center marks and center lines. And that will show you what all these different things do. Yep. Yeah. So, like I said, help is useful nowadays. It's still not perfect, but it's useful. So, please use it. Um, so, the next thing I want to show here is uh, let's see, um, importing and editing of PDF files. So, again, with a show of hands, how many people use PDF files in their day-to-day -day work? Probably quite a few. Right. Um, in the past, what we've had to do is use third-party programs to edit 
uh, PDF files or to convert PDF files into AutoCAD geometry. And um, what I'm showing what, or what I'm about to show isn't going to work in every PDF file. Uh, there's basically two different kinds of PDF files. There's a raster PDF file and then there are vector PDF files. Uh, raster is basically a bunch of dots that make up something that might end up looking like a line as opposed to a vector PDF which actually has coordinates from point A to point B to represent a line. So this really works with the, the vector types of PDF files. But uh, I'm going to start here. I already have a PDF attached to this drawing and I want to show you how we can convert some of this geometry from a PDF file to AutoCAD native geometry. So I'm just going to pick on this PDF and uh, I'm going to uh, da, 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 what do I do? So I'm going to pick. Oops, is this, uh, yeah, that's my layout. Okay. Oh, I got to go to. Sorry, I got to go to model space. I was I was selecting the layout, not the um, not the uh, PDF file. So I select the PDF file here, and I'm going to turn off my grid because I don't like grids, and I'm going to go to Edit Layers. And I'm going to just turn off everything except for the column layer. So we'll get rid of a bunch of stuff that I don't really care about. So, so I end up with just some, some of the geometry itself. And then uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, choose import as objects. There we go. And you can pick you know, whether you want to convert it all or whatever. Uh, I'm going to say for this, I just want this one piece converted. And then I'm going to, I could keep the PDF attached or I can detach it. I'm going to just get rid of it because I don't care about it after I convert this. And what you see now is I now have some polylines and circles and stuff. I no longer just have a bunch of, uh, or, or a PDF um, file attached to this. So this can save you a lot of time if you have a PDF file and you need to start working with it, maybe an as-built or something. Uh, I'm just going to get rid of this and I'll also show you how we can import a PDF from scratch. So I'm going to go here, um, by the way, I can just use the PDF command or I could even just use the, uh, the standard insert command and um, change it, or not insert, but uh, attach command and insert a PDF file. So I'm going to do a, a PDF import. And the default here is importing a file. So I'm going to say, yeah, that's what I want. And I've got a actually a multi-sheet PDF that I'm going to bring in. And you can see I've got three different sheets. Um, we can convert, as so I said, that you know this is going to convert vector geometry. It's not going to do anything with raster geometry. Um, you know, solids can come in as solid fills. Um, True type text can come in as actual text objects, and even raster images can be inserted as you're bringing things in. And if it has layers, you can use the PDF layers, etc. Right? Um, we can change the scale. So, oh, <clears throat> say I want to insert it a scale 40, and I'm just going to hit OK. And you'll see here it's processing, you know, 27,000 or whatever it was different pieces of geometry. And here's my PDF file inserted now as AutoCAD geometry. So there's a couple things I want to show. I mean, well, first of all, how amazing is that that uh, you can convert something from a PDF file and auto automatically ha end up with the um, AutoCAD version of it, including, like I said, things like images. So let's see if I can grab this. Uh, so that's the raster image that was inserted. You know, we've got some solid fills here that were created. Um, and, you know, um, this is not a dimension, but it's a bunch of text. So the one um, gotcha caveat thing that you should know about is that uh, text is, there's two different kinds of text. There's a SHX text and then there's two type text. If you have SHX text, all that is really is a bunch of pen strokes. So you'll see if I come over here and I select things, um, this isn't text. This is just a bunch of lines that it was inserted because it was SHX fonts. But if you have true type fonts, that does come across as a text object. So uh, 
you know, try to use true, true type fonts. If you don't, then you know you you basically have to do some reworking if you want that to actually be text objects. But that's some really cool stuff to be able to um, bring in a PDF file, and it's supported by Autodesk. You don't have to worry about a third-party program that you're working with for that type of support. <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, I'll go back to 2D graphics here for a second. Oh, um, actually, I want to show. Well, I'll show this in a second, I guess. So um, there's some additional 2D graphic uh, productivity enhancements as well as just improvements that I want to show. And uh, some of these things will only work if you have a graphics card that supports hardware acceleration and is working with DirectX 11. So what I just did is uh, went into the graphics config command, this little blue circle here in, on the status bar, and selected graphic performance. And that'll show me uh, whether or not you have hardware acceleration turned on or turned off. And uh, even, um, by the way, even if you have a graphics card that supports hardware acceleration, if you're having any kind of graphics-related issues, sometimes it's best to turn this off. So turn it off if necessary. Um, but if, you, if your graphics card supports DirectX 11, and I'm going to jump over here to a custom view. And I'm going to show you how, uh, how these custom views get created, too. That's another great uh, feature that, um, you know, if you have a drawing that has lots of different views and stuff in it or lots of different pieces and you want to be able to jump from one to another, I'll show you how to do this. So I'm going to switch to this view called Dots. And um, I've just basically got some columns or something here. I'm um, not even sure what this is, a wall. Maybe it's a log cabin. Uh, but I'm going to pick on this uh, um, polyline. And I'm going to change this from line type by layer to dots. And the first thing you're going to see is actually the dots have a thickness to them. It's not just a single pixel. So you can actually see something with dots. Um, but the cool thing here is you can see if I move my cursor over the gap, I don't get any kind of a selection. If I pick on the dot, right, it highlights the, the line. And that's how AutoCAD has always worked. Uh, but there's a new setting in AutoCAD called LT Gap Selection. Again, you don't have to type in the whole thing. Just start typing it, and then I can uh, you know, pick it from the list here or, and get it. And I'm going to turn that on. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and move my cursor again, and hopefully you can see this. And I'm not going to pick on the dot, but I'm just picking in between the uh, polyline, in between the dots, and it still allows you to select the, the polyline. So um, you, know, you don't have to have something that intersects. In fact, this is really cool. If I draw a line from the end of this, I'm going to do, um, I want to bring up um, the uh, object snap menu so I can pick a specific object snap. So I'm going to type, uh, press the shift key and hit the right control button, and that'll bring up the list of object snaps for me. Okay, so that's shift and right click button. And I'm going to say I want to go perpendicular to this line, and you can see that it's, it's finding, or that arc, I should say, and you can see that it's finding that uh, perpendicular object snap, even though that was set to a line type and there was a gap sitting there. All right, so if I change this back to line type of bilayer, oops, yeah, continuous. Okay, you can see that it did meet where that that arc would have met. So that's that's pretty neat that you can actually snap to something that isn't visible. Um, okay. And then I think the only last thing I wanted to show real quick here is, uh, you know, for those of you that are doing 3D work, right? Uh, and this, was, again, is going to be just for people using AutoCAD. Since uh, AutoCAD LT doesn't uh, support all of the 3D tools and stuff. But if I go over to Auto, uh, to the, my model space, oh, actually, that's not the one I wanted. Um, Studio. This is the drawing I want. So I'm sure that most of you have heard or seen or um, 
you know, uh, been exposed to 3D printing in some way. It seems to be, you know, all the rage nowadays within um, the industry. Um, you can do some amazing things using 3D printing. And uh, in the past, you could you would have to go through a third-party program in order to get a model from AutoCAD to print with a 3D printer. Um, so here I have a nice little house, right? It's a little log cabin. And what you can do inside of AutoCAD 2017 now, uh, use another one of um, Ashley's little tricks and go to my 3D modeling tab, change my workspace to 3D modeling, uh, is that there's uh, now a new tool called Print Studio that's available from within AutoCAD. And Print Studio is a, it's an application that um, ships with AutoCAD, but it's not installed by default. One of the really cool things is that if I pick on Print Studio, and it's not installed already, it's going to ask me if you want to install it. So that's pretty neat. But I happen to have it installed already. So um, another cool thing here is it says, uh, you know, 3D printing uh, requires careful preparation. Uh, do you want to learn about 3D printing? And if you don't, if never used 3D printing before, you probably want to pick that because uh, you want, want to understand kind of what it is that you're doing. Um, so it's asking me for selecting solids or, wa or water type meshes. I'm going to select the building. And you can see down in the status bar, it's uh, unioning selected objects. So it's basically trying to create a model, a continuous model you know, uh, of, of this building. And, you know, we can go in and uh, select things. I'm just going to hit OK. And this is going to fire up Print Studio. It takes just a second. Or maybe a few seconds. There we go. Okay, so it brings in Print Studio, and uh, we can actually go in here and we can select what type of uh, print device we want. So the Autodesk printer or MakerBot or one of these other things. Uh, I'm just going to use the MakerBot. That's fine. And uh, I'm going to say that I want to scale this to fit within my printing space. And here's my model that I can now either print directly to the device or I could print a file that can be brought over and printed to the device. So this is really cool that you can print directly from AutoCAD and create a 3D model of the object that you're using. Um, and 3D printers are definitely coming down in, in price. Um, so. You know, if, if this is something that you can use, you know, please uh, um, take a look at it and and uh, and see what you think. Okay, so that's what I had. Uh, Ashley, you can finish the last couple of slides, and then maybe we have time for a question or two. Yeah, sure. So I'll just um, let me change this back to me. Okay, so let me know when you can uh, when you can see my screen. Yep, I can see it. Okay. Uh, assuming they're showing the AutoCAD screen. Yes. <laughs> um, uh, so for um, any additional resources, uh, we have some uh, links here for uh, AutoCAD 2017 trial download. Um, you can download uh, LT as well. Um, uh, Norman, are you seeing the PowerPoint? So I'm, I'm still seeing an AutoCAD screen, but I think that's my refresh. Oh, I am seeing the PowerPoint. Okay. I do see the PowerPoint. Okay. Okay, great. great. Yep. Um, so the last thing we had here is um, thank you to everyone for, for joining us. And the people that were new and the people that um, came back, we always uh, appreciate when you when you take time out of your day to, to come and, and join us. So um, we certainly hope that you uh, you learned something today. If you have any questions or, or feedback for us, um, please let us know, or you can email us directly at autodesk.help.webinars at autodesk.com. And uh, we do have one last poll. Um, and that poll is, um, did you learn uh, something new in today's session? All right, we should stop right there. It was 100%. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty, I was, I was thinking to myself, that was pretty quick.
Yeah. Right, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, close that poll. And uh, so it looks like 98% of you said yes, you did learn something new, and 2% and of you said no. So um, we're very happy that that you learned something new. And again, thank you very much for joining us, and uh, we hope that you'll uh, join us again. And uh, so, so Naman, do you have any uh, one or two quick questions that we can answer? Uh, no, actually, I mean, uh, pe people had some questions about PDF and uh, graphic images being converted into um, a PDF, a raster. Um, so that clarification is needed. Mm -hmm. As far as, uh, you know, what happens if like you Like if you have a raster PDF, it won't yeah. convert the line work. Right, yeah, it has to be a vector PDF. And actually there's a, a quick trick as far as determining whether or not something is a raster or a vector PDF. If you pick on the PDF file, what, if it um, like shades as, you know, I think it's like a magenta shading or something like that, um, it, it's, I, I'm, I can't remember now if it means that it's raster or vector. I think it, it means it's a raster PDF. Um, but uh, it, there's a really quick way to determine which, which type of PDF it is. If it's raster, you're not going to get um, any kind of geometry being inserted. But uh, if that's uh, all we have, uh, I guess you know, we'd like to thank everybody for joining, and uh, hopefully we'll see you back again sometime in the near future. Again, we'll be here next week with uh, another one of our webinars. And I uh, hope everybody has a great day, and thank you very much. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.